Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be learning about one of the most important things when determining someone's financial position, and that's net worth. I use this exact methodology weekly as a report card into my finances, and by the end of this video, so will you. This methodology I'll be sharing is the same one used by Forbes to determine the net worth of your favourite celebrities, and we'll be doing this all from the free online resource, Google Sheets. Before we get into it, please make sure to like this video and subscribe down below to see more content like this in the future. Let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is define what net worth is. Net worth is simply the sum of all your assets minus the sum of all your liabilities, also known as debt. An asset is something you own that has value or is worth some amount of money. An example would be a savings account, a house, or perhaps even a car. On the other hand, a liability is something you owe. This could be a mortgage, a credit card, or even a student loan. When the sum of assets minus the sum of liabilities is calculated, the resulting amount is our net worth. If this is positive, you have what's called a positive net worth. And when it's negative, you have what's called a negative net worth. The question you may be asking is, why is net worth important? The key here is knowing your financial position and being able to track whether you are moving ahead financially or moving backwards. We're also able to clearly see how our wealth changes over time and focus our energy on growing our net worth and increasing our assets and reducing our liabilities. We work so hard in our daily lives and we want to make sure that we are consciously building a nest egg that allows us to live comfortably, reduce the need to work in our retirement years and be able to help our children in their financial journeys. You may believe someone with a high income is better off financially. However, net worth is the real measure of one's wealth. So let's get into the calculation. First, grab a piece of paper and start by listing all the assets and liabilities you have. On the asset side, think of your home, investment properties, cars, jewelry, retirement accounts such as KiwiSaver, stocks, crypto, savings accounts, anything with value. And again, on the liability side, Think of things such as mortgages, car loans, student loans, personal loans, credit cards, or even if you owe friends and family money. Once you've made the list, put a value next to each of these. If you're in the United States, what's the value of your house on Zillow? What's your car's worth on eBay if you were to sell it? The latest portfolio value in your stocks or retirement accounts. Find a best estimate of what the value would be. On the liability side, Check the latest balance on your statements and record these down. Now we're going to put these into Google Sheets to do our calculations. I created this simple template based on my own financial situation with some randomized numbers. At the top of the page you can see that I have included the exchange rates of multiple currency pairs. This is because I have investments both in the United States and Singapore, therefore I need to change these into my home currency to do the calculation and Google Finance has some great formulas to do this. If you only have assets in one currency, you can forget this step. As we move down, you can see I made columns for the assets and liabilities. Use the list we created earlier to make a column for every asset and liability you identified. In my case, you can see I have a number of bank and investment accounts, as I don't currently own a home. I've included a couple rows underneath these headers. The first one is to give more specifics around the accounts. For example, I might have three term deposits with the same bank, so therefore I need to define these. The second one is the currency of the account. Again, if you only operate in one currency, you don't need to do this step. You can see in the left column that I include a date of when the calculation is made. In the final columns, I calculate the sum of the assets minus the sum of the liabilities. This looks like a complex formula, but is only to accommodate the multiple currencies that I've used. Again, if you're only using one currency, just take the sum of the assets or liabilities as so. With multiple currencies, this formula is simply summing the assets or liabilities by a currency and then multiplying by the exchange rate and then taking the sum of these once they're all in the single currency. Once we do that for assets and liabilities, we must subtract the liabilities from the assets. The resulting value is our net worth. If you wanted to visualize this, you could create a time series chart showing how this value changes over time. Another chart you could create is a pie chart to show the composition of your assets. So now you have your net worth amount and you may be wondering how yours compares to the average in America. If we look at the median American net worth in 2019, Federal Reserve found this number to be 121,000 US dollars. However, this is looking at people of all ages, education, and life situation. If we instead dissect this by age, 
we can see that for those under 35, they have a median of just $14,000. This is likely due to the relatively shorter amount of time that people in this age group have been working, and the fact that they may still have large amounts of student debt that they owe. We can see that the net worth increases by age, however as expected in the 75 plus range, this is reducing as retirees have stopped work and are likely using their net worth nest egg to fund their retirement. This next table also shows that those with a relatively higher level of education generally have a higher net worth value. This next chart shows that singles have a lower net worth, and this is expected given that they're only on one income, not two like couples, and couples can afford to split expenses. Childless couples also appear to have a higher net worth, and this is likely due to them being able to save a higher proportion of their income, as their expenses aren't as high as for those with children. To conclude this video, I want to end by evaluating how you can increase your net worth. I found this great summary from Forbes that sums this up well. On the asset side, increasing your income and cutting your expenses is one of the main ways. This means you have a higher disposable income, or income not used for essential expenses, and can therefore increase your savings and grow your bank balance, which as we know is an asset. The summary also suggests to increase your savings via retirement accounts and investments. These accounts are important as these have the ability to grow regardless of your contributions, as the underlying investments grow over time. The retirement accounts also have the ability to offset your tax burden. And lastly, paying off debt means you are subtracting a lower liability sum from your assets, thus growing your net worth, particularly when we consider the fact that the interest expense will also reduce, which is good on the savings side. So there you have it guys, I hope you learn more about net worth and why it is important to know. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps it grow and encourages me to make more content like this. Cheers! and I'll catch you on the next one.